while progressing in life at times you feel stuck due to the lack of knowledge of how to manage your time well deciding how to prioritize the different facets of daily self management gets hectic whether it's for school students university students or working people the lack of motivation a great amount of workload and the expectations of the academic front in college or at one's workplace is draining for an individual under such circumstances a helping hand can instruct and support us in setting the right direction for our goals at mentor mitra we engage with individuals wherever they are in their journey of career development and help them learn life skills to manage complex situations while enhancing their potential and performance to optimum our involvement helps individuals to set the right goals and create options by following an objective process thereby enabling them to define and manage their priorities we help them generate self awareness and teach them how to prioritize their time effectively we also enhance their emotional quotient with techniques like mind mapping and dealing with success and failure to reinforce their goals and processes while also grooming them with soft skills that are necessary for the competitive selection process thus making them confident and prepared for success that there are many challenges that one faces during exams and that kind of affects the stress levels and the performance of the individual there due to the stress which is there so how do people manage that so the first thing that people should remember is that each and every person has a different coping mechanism right so a person can use an avoidant mechanism technique or it can he or she can use problem focused technique so in avoidant technique we what do we actually do when a stress comes okay so what we do is we avoid we try to avoid it we try to uh, distract ourselves from that stress so that we can completely focus on whatever is coming whatever is approaching and now that the exams have been cancelled people are getting more and more anxious and stressed related to what will happen when will the exams be coming and what should we do now because we are so confused that are the exams going to even happen should we actually prepare for that so this stress is very you know apprehensive and uh, you know there are two types of stress one is you stress that is the healthy type of stress we all experience when we are going to give an exam right but we have to you know focus on how we are coping with that stress because if we are just you know overthinking and you know pondering about what are, what is going to happen then that is that stress is going to become a distress for us and that is going to impact our daily functioning so of course stress impacts a lot Okay. Moving on to the second question, there are certain symptoms which go unidentified in students that even if they feel something, they're more like, you know, maybe if I'll see a movie, I'll be better to go with, or maybe if I'll just settle. But then those are the symptoms you usually don't recognize. But then they pile up to become something more big. So how do you deal with such situation? So first of all, everyone, whenever someone's experiencing extreme stress or anxiety. we know that we are upset okay and sometimes it all depends on how far the exam is okay so if the exam is very far and we you know kind of repress that thing that you know uh, let me just procrastinate a little more instead of studying and we should focus on you know watching a movie or you know relieving that stress so that you know those thoughts don't overpower us but also uh, these uh, symptoms go unidentified when we suppress them you know if the exam is very near and we don't know that you know uh, what is going to for example if someone had a breakup recently and his or her exam is the next day 
okay so one has to suppress those negative feelings so that one can perform well in that exam otherwise <laughs> the exam <laughs> he or she is going to you know uh, end the exam you know in a very so, bad mood and one is going to fail so that is very important that you know yes the thoughts go unidentified but even when they you know identify those thoughts it depends upon when the exam is coming you know what kind of coping mechanism they are going to use okay got it so yeah then okay my next question is generally the students and the college students or even us for that matter what resources do we have to access for mental health in our schools and colleges as we know india is not a country where mental health is taken that so can you comment on the resources and is college helping or what should we do about it okay so there are of course school counselors and college counselors in every college and school nowadays it has made mandatory but of course there are those schools you know where the kind of help is not available okay the first thing that i would like to say is self help okay help yourself because sometimes the help is not be available for each and every one because a help is expensive sometimes and second is availability of help is not there so uh if a person is in a school where there is a school counselor or a college counselor then one should put faith in that counselor okay one should not have these apprehensions that oh my god that person is going to judge me or he or she is a psychology teacher or anything like that one should have faith that okay i can open up to this person and even if that doesn't work out so it's okay sometimes people don't help and sometimes people don't ask for help because uh, some day or the other the person reached out to someone and that person couldn't help them and so they think that there's no use but that's not the case you have to trust in something if you want to you know achieve something in this world so that's the school and colleges help the counselors help that all that matters is that you reach out to them from my perspective about human life is it has two aspects for some of you who are grown up enough to have babies and children of your own or some of you who are young enough to have parents of your own and still around I lost my mother a few years back. I do still have a father who's ninety plus, though lives with my elder brother. But, anyways, if you have somebody younger or somebody elder whom you madly love, for the younger ones, what would you be suggesting to them? Beta kush raho. Hmm? You failed in the exam. You couldn't make it through the uh, final stages. You or you tripped on the fine, the very first step. the person who really really loves and cares for you more than his own life or her own life would always tell you beta kush raho why because the things are not in favor of you but what can you still choose to be is happy and that's the choice of my favorite line that i always um, you know love to talk about and something that i love to use on myself is also uh, that you know there is nothing that can't be worked on right everything in this world almost everything right almost everything is something that can be worked on could be you know um, developed right could be improved you know we as human beings have such amazing capabilities and capacity that once we identify a certain thing we can definitely definitely try to improve on the same if you really uh, if it is paining you probably it's not your strength area it's a weak area right if maths pain you probably maths is not your strength area if you love talking with people maybe communication is your strength area so some of these things you will know it yourself further apart from that do ask your friends you know you uh, you know please ask your friends what do you think i am really good at and they will tell you rattle down the three four things that you are really good at ask your parents and sometimes uh, parents also tell my mera beta isme se bahut acha hai mera beta maths mein acha hai mera beta दोस्तों के साथ बहुत अच्छी तरह से रहता है
um, things that are looking very different is uh, work from home may continue to be a way of life because uh, organizations have realized, people have realized that nothing, uh, there, there are lots of things that can be done as well from home and possibly better. And uh, those professions will perhaps continue to uh, enjoy the benefit of working from home, if I might call that. Uh, education and training has have already gone digital, but there's a lot of scope of improvement. And with that, uh, there would be uh, a lot of training of the trainers that will that will come into play. We perhaps will not have to travel so much for work because earlier we used to just take a flight to for a one hour meeting to Chennai or for some training session to ed attend in Dubai. And that's uh, uh, definitely- The way I look at uh, analyzing uh, work or a analogy to work is more to do with your mind. Uh, where you do your all logical things, your aspirations, everything is logical. And life is the all... The message here is, we all have our starting points, we have our journeys, and we have our destinations. So today, it might look like we're not headed anywhere, but in the end, it will all work out. So there's no need to be disheartened at all, and it is absolutely fine to be an average. The second part of the story goes where finding it comes about finding your own mojo while i was an average student i ensured just one thing i i kept my desire to learn and keep that fire in inside of me ignited whether it was traveling meeting new people or even exploring new cultures it was all about upskilling myself for me although while learning i didn't really know where that was actually heading to but then if I were to look back and think and connect the dots, I have the job that I have today only because of the skills and knowledge that I gave. While progressing in life, at times you feel stuck due to the lack of knowledge of how to manage your time well. Deciding how to prioritize the different facets of daily self-management gets hectic, whether it's for school students, university students, or working people. The lack of motivation, a great amount of workload, and the expectations of the academic front in college or at one's workplace is draining for an individual. Under such circumstances, a helping hand can instruct and support us in setting the right direction for our goals. At Mentor Mitra, we engage with individuals wherever they are in their journey of career development and help them learn life skills to manage complex situations while enhancing their potential and performance to optimum. Our involvement helps individuals to set the right goals and create options by following an objective process, thereby enabling them to define and manage their priorities. We help them generate self-awareness and teach them how to prioritize their time effectively. We also enhance their emotional quotient with techniques like mind mapping and dealing with success and failure to reinforce their goals and processes while also grooming them with soft skills that are necessary for the competitive selection process. Thus, making them confident and prepared for success. That there are many challenges that one faces during exams and that kind of affects the stress levels and the performance of the individual there due to the stress which is there. So how do people manage that? So the first thing that people should remember is that each and every person has a different coping mechanism, right? So a person can use an avoidant mechanism technique or it can, he or she can use problem focused technique. So in avoidant technique, we what do we actually do when a stress comes? 
okay so what we do is we avoid we try to avoid it we try to uh, distract ourselves from that stress so that we can completely focus on whatever is coming whatever is approaching and now that the exams have been cancelled people are getting more and more anxious and stressed related to what will happen when will the exams be coming and what should we do now because we are so confused that are the exams going to even happen should we actually prepare for that so this stress is very you know apprehensive and uh, you know there are two types of stress one is you stress that is the healthy type of stress we all experience when we are going to give an exam right but we have to you know focus on how we are coping with that stress because if we are just you know overthinking and you know pondering about what are, what is going to happen then that is that stress is going to become a distress for us and that is going to impact our daily functioning so of course stress impacts a lot okay moving on to the second The steps to avail the e-certificate are as follows. Attend the complete webinar. Once you see thank you displayed on the screen, there will appear a link to Google attendance form in the chat box. Click to mark your attendance and get the feedback form email. Fill the questionnaire that you received in your email for the details. Follow our pages on Instagram as well as Facebook. If the above stated steps are followed, a new certificate will be automatically mailed to you kindly know that the certificate will be mailed in 24 to 48 hours mentor mitra is a mentoring organization our aim is to guide individuals wherever they are they are in their journey of career development and help them learn life skills to manage complex situations while enhancing their academic performance to optimal Our involvement helps students to set the right goals and enables them to define and manage their priorities as well as enhance their emotional quotient. Good evening everybody. Welcome to today's webinar on the topic grooming and soft skills development. The session will be led by established professionals Ms. Nisha Gupta and Ms. Grishma Kampi. Please free please feel free to leave your questions in the chat box and we will try to answer them today the first speaker we have is miss miss nisha gupta nisha nisha gupta is an independent image con etiquette consultant she works with organizations and individuals to bring forth the best version of themselves nisha gupta in her career spanning more than 20 years has rich experience in varied industries like hospitality advertising public relations art image and etiquette consulting she has been able to successfully launch various brands the formative years of her career were with itc welcome group in hospitality sales and marketing the mauritius tourism office launch and its pr was successfully handled by her as a part of her career with trikia grey advertising Nisha in her advertising career has worked on brands like Mauritius Tourism, Kellogg's, VIP Industries, Binani Cement to name a few. She is a trained image consultant under the UK's leading image consultant Carrot Spencer for of style direction and celebrity makeup artist Arian Pool. She has also been trained by leading etiquette expert of the English Manor in global etiquette. Nisha was the head of department of image of the Vasian Knowledge Hub and Image and Etiquette Academy and played a pivotal role in its branding, advertising, launch and operations. She has recently started her personal blog, The, the Domestic Goddess, on gleanings, 
and learnings through the experiences of life. You can visit her blog through her Instagram handle and her YouTube page. Miss Nisha, you could begin now. Thank you very much for that introduction. Good evening, everybody at Mentor Mitra. Good evening, everybody that's joined us today. It is my pleasure and honor to have this energy exchange with you. Let's make it meaningful. So, the topic today is grooming and soft skills. May I slightly tweak it and call it groomed for success with soft skills? So let me start with a little story. There was a little girl who loved eating fried fish and her mother used to make delicious fried fish for her. And um, every day she'd make fried fish, but she'd cut the head and the tail. And this little girl was very intrigued and said, mommy, you make delicious fried fish, but why do you cut the head and the tail? So, so the mom thought and said, oh, my darling, I don't know, but I think your grandmother did that. So this little girl goes rushing to her grandmom and says, uh, you've taught mom such a delicious recipe, but why would you cut the head and the tail? She said, oh, my darling, I don't know, but your grandmother, you know, my mother, your great grandmother did that. So she goes to her great grandmother who says, um, I don't know. My mother used to do that. So she goes to her great, great grandmother who's really la on her last now. And she says, darling, very simple. The frying pan was small. What I'm trying to get at is that we human beings are creatures of conditioned responses, of conditioning that we do not question. And from childhood, there is a trajectory that has been set for us. School and college and extracurricular activities and certifications and more certifications and more extracurricular activities and then professional degrees and then, uh, you know, further professional degrees and it goes on this hamster wheel. So just walk with me through understanding how important are these things called soft skills. Let me just paint this, this little image. Let's walk through together. So for the last few years, we've been living in a very VUCA world. Volatile, unpredictable, complex, very aggressive. And there's lots happening in this world. There's a whole cluttered marketplace out there where there's products and organizations and brands and each one vying for attention in a world that is instant, instant noodles, instant coffee, instant hookups, instant breakups, instant peaks and troughs. And everything is instant where more than time management, attention management is what we need. And in all of this, brands are selling their unique story to us and their unique proposition and we are like associating with these brands because perhaps we feel there'll be a rub off. Perhaps we feel through this association, there'll be something that we will buy into. And this continues. And while this continues, we are then understanding consumerism, where the Dietro effect teaches us more and more consumerism, where, you know, uh, people are constantly upgrading their lives and constantly aspiring for more and uh, constantly, you know, using this as a salve to the very transient nature of life. And the shelf life of those things itself is becoming shorter and shorter. And alongside this is the sea of all of us humanity on this constant hamster wheel. Like I said, from these classes to these certifications to all the things that are required, all of us clamoring, hey, it's me, I'm here, please see me, I'm the one, can I be the chosen one? I've got the right fit for you, I can do the right job for you. See me and everyone trying to communicate, wanting to be the chosen one. And then whoosh, the penny drops and the bubble bursts. And then we understand that, hey, it wasn't just those hard skills that were required to fit the bill. There was much, much more to it. There were other critical skills. I mean, today, companies are not going to hire someone who's a top-notch uh, MBA or a professional in any, in any capacity, an engineer, an IT geek. 
if he or she does not have the requisite other skills what happens at that crucible moment what happens at that moment when adversity strikes what happens do they have the critical thinking are they a team player do they have compassion do they have emotional intelligence can they represent the organization well do they know the art of small talk can they be an ambassador for this organization can they know how to get the best out of the team do they have cross cultural diversity do they have inclusivity do they have equanimity and that's when we understand that yes hard skills are very very important they are the hardware they are our knowledge they are our expertise they are our skills but without the critical skills which are the soft skills which are the ones that i have just meant talked about we cannot operate these hard skills so really the soft skills are your software your operating system where you are going to be using these the skill set of yours to communicate outside to the world your ideas your mission your products whatever you need to sell your core competency and then whoosh again we have the pandemic and here again there's a paradigm shift that's happened there's so much more adversity that's come in there's a change in the way businesses are being done there's a change in the way people are now working working from home is possibly going to be here to stay for a really long time and so in the midst of all this how do i ensure that i am the relevant fit how do i build a brand that is so unique that is so different that i am the chosen one so let's take a little pause and understand something about this the good thing about soft skills is that they are not nature but nurture you do not have to be born with them you can learn them you can imbibe them you can use i measure observe you can then apply them inculcate them and create your own unique brand but how do i create this unique brand of mine that's going to be different not just by the learned academic responses that i may be taught about interview skills or how to climb the corporate ladder or to break the glass ceiling how do i do that so first things first do i know myself and how well do i know myself so of course all of us at professional colleges are taught how to do a swot analysis but i'd like you to step one step before this and know yourself a little bit more to understand who am i what's my raison d'etre what is my purpose what stokes me what's my passion why do i exist why do i wake up every morning and this is not something that's going to be one day i wake up and i have the answer it's going to be something that's a journey an evolving journey of casting off the old applying new experiences i'm sure most of us have um heard of the golden circle of simon sinek where he teaches organizations and people start with your core the innermost circle is your why it's your purpose it is what actually uh, appeals to the limbic brain the brain that develops dependability and trust and decision making and it is the core of your existence once i know that about myself it makes me realize what are the values i align with or uh, what so there are a whole lot of tools out there i'm sure mentor mitra can help you with that there are also things online uh, there is also deep journaling reflection about life about your critical moments about your triggers and how you respond to know who you are and then of course there is how now the how part of it are your strengths and weaknesses we've all done swots i like not to call it a weakness because as richard bach says if you argue for your weakness it's yours let's call it a challenge because challenges are something we want to get over so your strengths are all your strengths and your challenges are your inner paradigm we leave your opportunities and threats that's your external paradigm what we're trying to build on is your internal uh 
qualities, passions, uh, abilities, skill sets. And then you take this outside and you see what. And the what then becomes your uh, service, your product, and what you take out, your job uh, titles. And when I'm armed with that knowledge about myself, I can now take this out into the world and put out my uniqueness, my unique brand. Now, just remember something that's really important, that when we meet someone for the first time, we actually give them a slice of ourselves, a very small sliver of ourselves. And because human beings are very biased creatures, we quickly use these uh, little slices of, of a person and our subconscious mind creates an image. And this image, you know, kind of is biased and this image will kind of uh, give a projection of who we think that person is. So when we actually put ourselves out there, we've got to ensure that the kind of image that we're putting outside is one that works in our favor. One that has such a halo effect that it kind of extrapolates into every area, every facet. So that people don't invent you based on what their biases are, but you have given them the right tools for them to understand and accept you. So Professor Albert Mehrabian had done a research to say that when we first meet a stranger, 55% of that first impression or that image uh, that the person casts on us and the image we form in our mind is based on visuals. We human beings are very visual creatures. So everything that we see forms a part of that 55%. Now, what are this? This is all non-verbal. It's the way that person is dressed, their appearance, their uh, grooming, their clothing, their body language. Um, in, in case of women, we have much more that we're judged on because we have makeup and we have jewelry and we have necklines and we have hemlines and so much more. 55%. The way you stand, your deportment, your facial expressions, did you smile? Did you make eye contact? Was there confidence? Was there not? 38% is your tone of voice. Hello, good to see you. Hello, good to see you. Complete different, same words. And 7% are your words. Now, in those words lie your expertise and your knowledge. But if that first two parameters are not met. People are not going to engage with you. People are not going to open doors for you. People are not going to transact with you. People are not going to give you time of day. Why? Simply because this is something we carry forward from ages ago when we were really cavemen, when we came out and when we looked out and scan the horizon to check whether there was friend or foe, what looked like friend we would engage with, what looked like foe, we would either get into fight or flight mode. And that we still carry forward. So the moment there is trust and dependability because this person's appearance and body language gives us that authenticity, I will take this transaction forward. So if appearance is such a large part of me, then I must use it as a tool to work for me. So make sure that this appearance is appropriate. Make sure that the clothes that I'm wearing, my hygiene factors, my grooming is so appropriate that it works in favor for my role, goal, occasion, time, place, context, uh, the industry that I am in the kind of uh, interactions I'm going to have and the kind of success that I want to meet with. My appearance need to, needs to be me, authentic, not someone else, so that um, my focus then becomes my knowledge and my conversation and what I am there to achieve, not just how I'm looking. And it needs to be attractive. And when I say attractive, it needs to bring the focus onto pleasant, dependable, trustworthy, and then into this triangle for business communication. Anything else beyond that will be distracting.
Of course, we have very little time, but um, you know, as image consultants, um, that there's a whole minefield out there that we can work with, whether it's personal style or uh, it's it's using semiotics, which is the science of science. Every piece of garment can be uh, giving off a mood and a message. Are you a decision maker? Are you authoritative? Are you uh, influential? Are you casual? Are you laid back? Are you lazy? Are you um, you know someone who who's a who's a team player? Who's a approachable so much. So we can actually use our appearance to build our brand. We can use it as a tool. Also knowing various other kinds of, uh, you know, uh, when to wear what, what's a black tie, what's a white tie, what's a lounge suit for women, especially if you're traveling uh, globally to know what's going on, whether you're in Indian context, what's the context? There is so much that you can do with your appearance. And of course, the rest of it that goes with it, which is your grooming and your hygiene, which are given and there is no compromise on that. Then comes the other visual part, which is your body language. Your body language is your deportment. Your deportment is how you carry yourself, how your entrances, your exits, your maintaining eye contact for parity, your smile, your open body postures, how you network and use the room, how you use your space, your personal space to actually expand, to show authority, or how not to encroach into someone's personal space. All of this is important. Of course, also knowing when not to use it. For example, as uh, etiquette coaches and image consultants, one of the very important tools of uh, corporate uh, introductions was the handshake. But with the pandemic, it is now an obsolete a thing or thing to be kept away in the back burner for some time. So that's your body language. Then there's communication, which I am going to leave to my erstwhile next speaker who's going to talk about. However, just to know that there's verbal and vocal, there are your words, and there's your pitch and rate of speech and inflection and intonation and your public voice and your library voice, all of it that gives gravitas. Beyond this, there is your digital footprint. All of us are out there. And when we're out there, make sure that, that your image that you're putting out there is in line with what you want to achieve. Make sure it's not risky or controversial or uh, aligned to anything political or anything that can mar your career growth. Remember, that's the first place that you're going to be searched. Beyond that, we have etiquette and there's a massive minefield out there of etiquette and there is a whole uh, maneuvering that can be done, whether it's corporate etiquette and how you align yourself at work, being a team player, being someone who has great net etiquette, who, uh, someone who uh, knows how to uh, you have emotional agility, someone who actually knows how to conduct meetings, represent your organization globally or outside. Um, social graces, because today, you know, businesses are not conducted only in boardrooms. It could be on a golf course. It could be over cocktails. It could be over tea, breakfast, dinner, or lunch, knowing what to do. As Oscar Wilde said, the world was my oyster, but I used the wrong fork. So knowing all of those things, so much of navigation in the field of etiquette, knowing what to do within the organization, without the organization and outside. And of course, there is your emotional quotient or emotional agility where you have emotions, but you know how to be agile. You know how to bring intelligence to them. You know how to be adaptable to an ever-changing, complex kind of situation. So that's there. Then there is a growth mindset where I grab every experience with an initiative saying, if not me, then who? If not now, then when? And today, friends, a lot of companies are hiring people for their social capital. It's not just what you know, but who you know. 
not because you want to socially climb, but simply because it is your networking that is going to give you leads. It's going to give you opportunities. It, at the time of crisis, they will be the places where you will reach out to get solutions. So all of these things go towards creating your very unique brand. So at the end of it, I can see uh, being told that I'm at the end of my uh, session, really. I just like to say that own your strengths, be aware of continuously upgrading yourself, be continuously an evolving brand, casting away what is old and keeping on applying these new experiences and create a brand that you'd like to own. I'd like to just end with um, a line from Ulysses that says, yet all experience is an art where through gleameth that untraveled world whose margin fades forever and ever as I move. Take every opportunity that comes and keep a growth mindset. Create a brand that you'd like to own and others would like to associate with. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing a valuable advice on soft skills and grooming. I believe you beautifully explained how to create a brand of your own. Surely everyone listening is more informed on this topic and will be able to create a brand. Today, we will be talking about our short-term courses for performance enhancement. It aims to help school students and university students in examination prep, as well as, as well as working professionals in interview preparation, as well as soft skills grooming. Programs for working professionals. Mentor Mitra Spirit and Endeavor is to engage with the working people and help them improve their current performance, enhance motivational level, help them plan short-term goals and long-term goals, enhance their emotional quotient, as well as help them have better control over work-life balance and eventually success. We have a one-month engagement course known as Compass Pro Course. It will help you set the right direction and correct your ongoing journey. You will have a counseling session, which will be a SMART analysis and personality assessment, analytical report based on above, structured customized counseling one-to-one, one hour with experts, customized template for your career roadmap, set up a self-awareness program, flexible counseling session with mentors for total two hour time in a month, more features like free access to our webinars during a month and 24 seven chatbot facility. Programs for school students. These programs are designed to ensure that all integral focus areas in a student's career development journey are met and also help them in successful habit formation for optimization of their performance in the immediate future by scientific and continuous self-evaluation. We provide you the Compass course for direction setting, a one-month engagement course. You will have a counseling session, psychometric and cognitive assessment, competitive and ability and environment mapping, structured customized counseling one-to-one, -one, one hour with experts, tracks and option template, time tracker, flexible counseling session with mentor for two hours time in a month, free access to webinar for three months, continue support, 24 seven chatbot facility. The program for university students, Program for university students are designed to identify their tracks for the future, whether they want to work and grow in the field of study or interest or both. Our digital programs will help you make informed choices that are duly evaluated, know your options clearly, as well as optimize your efforts to achieve your goals long-term and short-term. The course is known as Compass Course for Direction Setting. You will have counseling session, psychometric test, competitive ability mapping, structured customized counseling one-to-one, -one, one hour with experts, tracks and options template, flexible counseling session with mentor for total two hours in a month, 24 seven chatbot access, 
as well as one month free access to our webinars. This is our landing page and you can access our landing page using the given link. You could also download our app using the, the link given or the QR code. You could scan the QR code. Next slide, please. Our app, the Mentor Mitra app, is available on Play Store. You can download it on Android. The, the download is free of cost. Programs are paid. App is available in India, Philippines, Bangladesh, Indonesia, Italy, Malaysia, Nepal, Russia, Spain, and Thailand. It will be launched in other countries soon. Kindly download our app and get help in your career. If you have any queries with the app, please feel free to contact us or drop us a mail at contact or connect Now we have our second speaker for the evening, Ms. Grishma Tampi. She is a certified image consultant, ICBI and Console Institute USA in 2011. She has pursued MBA from Wellinger, Univer Wellinger Institute of Management, Mumbai, and has prior work experience in human resource management, focusing on recruitment, campus hiring, and employee engagement. She has conducted over 850 training programs for over 15,000 participants in India and internationally. She conducts coaching sessions for CEOs, entrepreneurs, and celebrities. She has been in various newspapers like Economic Times, Business Standard, DNA, Times of India, Mumbai Mirror, and interviewed on Radio City and featured on Zoom, and conducted programs for companies like Johnson & Johnson, Bank of America, and Audi, to name a few. You can visit her website and YouTube and LinkedIn using the details given below. Ma'am, you could begin now. Thank you so much. Welcome everyone to today's session. Uh, it's been a wonderful, uh, you know, experience even listening to the other speaker. And I hope over the next 15 to 20 minutes, I'm able to give you some interesting insights on the art of communication. So obviously, like the previous speaker spoke, soft skills are really, really crucial in today's world. There was a research done at Harvard as well as Stanford University where they realized that as a person grows in their career, over technical skills, it's the soft skills that's going to really make a difference. Please go back to the previous slide. So while we talk about soft skills, there's so many different aspects like Ms. Gupta spoke about some time back. But communication abilities is one such skill that all of us need to develop and get better as we progress in our careers as well. And I can tell you this from personal experience because as a corporate trainer, I work across different levels of employees, right from you know freshers who are coming out of college all the way to CEOs. And let me assure you, if there's one topic that everybody needs work on, no prizes for guessing, it's communication skills. Obviously, the type of communication we're talking about evolves depending on what stage in your career you are going to be in, but it is a skill that it's worth mastering. Communication skills is one of the largest subjects that is taught on planet Earth. Think about it. Maximum books are on communication. Maximum courses are on communication. Yet, nobody can stand up and say, I'm an absolute expert on this subject. I'm here talking about it, but definitely cannot claim to be one. Because even in my life, I would have situations where there could be miscommunication, misunderstanding, because when we're communicating with human beings, it's about the emotions, the language barrier, cultural barrier, you know, the situation that we are in, so many things that could actually influence communication. So let's all, you know, firstly understand that communication is a complex subject, but at the same time, we all need to keep getting better at this entire concept that we're talking about. Next slide, please. 
So Ms. Gupta also briefly spoke about this, and this is a very, very important slide when we talk about communication skills. This is a slide or this model was created by Mr. Albert Mehrabian when he studied face-to-face -face communication. Of course, today we are in the digital space and, you know, this model would have evolved. But back in the day when it was about face-to-face -face communication, one thing was very evident. It is not just the words that we choose that defines whether the communication is successful or not. It's how we say the words, that is the voice, tone, intonation, pauses, accent, everything is 38%. But very interestingly, it's the body language, which is 55%. So if we want to be good at communication, rather than just focusing on what we are saying, we must spend some time to work on how we are saying it. So it's not just what you say, but how you say it. Think of the best speakers in the world. Think of the leaders in the world that inspire you. And you will notice they're not just good at, you know, the ideas, but it's also how passionate they are, the voice modulation, the body language that they use, that makes that communication so engaging and so interesting that we are hooked on to it. So uh, sometime back, Ms. Indra Nui, and I'm certain all of you know who she is. She's the former chairperson and CEO of PepsiCo. So Ms. Indra Nui was asked at a convention that what do you think are the five skills that are required for a leader? And she made this very easy by calling it the five C's. So according to her, the five C's were competency, courage, consistency, your compass or integrity, and last but not the least, communication skills. So this is a lady who was born in the year 1955 in Chennai in India. She completed her education in India, her master's as well, and then she got admitted into Yale University in the US. So even Ms. Indra Nui had to go through communication skills training. She had even flunked her test on communication skills. And in her summer break, she had to reapply for that entire exam. <clears throat> Sorry, because she came from India, she ended up speaking a little too fast for, as compared to the rest of the globe. So she had to work on, you know, ensuring that she speaks in a more fluent way, but at the same time at a, you know, lesser pace or speed. So she definitely talks about how communication has contributed to making her a successful leader in today's time. So if she had to work on her communication skills and continues to do so, none of us can ever over invest in learning communication. Let's move ahead, please. So when we talk about communication, a lot of us feel communication is more about speaking. Well, of course, it is about speaking, but it's also about listening and understanding what the opposite person says. So there is a concept called hearing and there is a concept called listening. Listening is when you're putting your entire focus, you know, you're focused on understanding what the opposite person is saying. Hearing could be, let's say there is some traffic noise at the back, or, you know, there's some external noise, the TV is going on in another room. You're not focusing on those sounds and you're hopefully listening to what I'm talking to you about. Right? So listening is where we put our focus, we try and understand what the person is saying. And obviously, listening needs to be a practice that we need to, you know, definitely imbibe. Because in today's world, it's so easy for us to get distracted, whether it's our mobile notifications, you know, whether something that's happening, our attention span is very less. But if you want to be a good communicator, apart from speaking well and focusing on your body language, let's also understand that listening and engaging and being a good listener is also contributing to your communication abilities. Next slide, please. So this is a line that I personally love. Most people do not listen with the intent to understand. They listen with the intent to reply. 
Now think about all the situations in your life where possibly it was a heated argument, it was a conflict, and you will notice that when emotions are very high, we don't really listen. It's more about getting back. It's more about you know giving giving back and contributing to that entire argument. And that's not going to make the communication effective. This is, in fact, one of the habits in Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. He says, seek first to understand and then to be understood. So be a good listener if you want to be a good communicator. Next slide, please. So let me give you some insight. So we spoke about verbal communication, but let's also talk about non-verbal communication or your body language. So we have certain traits that you can display to be seen as a good listener. So we're going to use the example of a very popular actress called Priyanka Chopra, who's been in Bollywood and Hollywood. And let's understand how she displays the right body language to be engaging in, you know, a, a, an interview that was going on. So can we go to the next slide? So these are the ways in which you can come across as a good listener. First is the head tilt. So it's a very beautiful, very subtle way to show somebody that you are listening. This happens invariably whenever we are engaged in watching a movie or we're listening to something very interesting, you will realize that your head gets slightly tilted. So when there is a slight head tilt, it's actually nonverbal communication that lets the opposite person know that you are listening and you're engaged in what the person is talking about. Then, of course, sitting up straight. If you're going to slouch or you're going to be relaxed, the person will not feel that you're really interested in what they are saying. So try and keep your back straight and if required, even, you know, move slightly closer to show better engagement. Tip number three, turn your body towards the person. If you're speaking with somebody and you turn your torso and body away, they're not going to feel that you're engaging with them. So ensure you turn your body and face them properly. Tip four, maintain good eye contact. Obviously, when we are speaking to someone, it's only respectful if we can maintain right eye contact. They would feel far more important if we could do that. <coughs> Next slide, please. Even here, you can notice that Ms. Chopra's body is slightly pushed forward. Also, if you look at her hands, they are not crossed, but she's left them slightly open because that also communicates a very positive body language. So even though the host may be asking her some challenging questions, her body language looks extremely calm and poised and confident and shows better engagement. Next slide. So hands should obviously be visible, which means that when you want to communicate well and you want to show engagement or show that you're interested, avoid keeping your hands away. For example, in a meeting, rather than keeping your hands under the desk or the table, if you can place it on top of the desk, that again shows a lot of openness and also helps you come across as more confident. Moving on. Some other tips that can help you come across as a good listener or an active listener, always end the conversation by paraphrasing or summarizing. This could be in a face-to-face -face meeting, it could be over a telephone call or a video call. So always close the conversation by asking. I just like to summarize our discussion and as discussed, I will need to work on one, two, three, is, is my understanding correct? So when you paraphrase or you summarize, even the person who's speaking with you feels important that you made it a point to make a note of whatever they've said. And you've also given feedback to close the communication cycle. So the opposite person is sure that you understood what they were trying to tell you. If you want to show more engagement during a conversation, ask interesting questions. It is not mean 
interrupting them, it only shows that you're really engaged in, in the conversation. But yes, do not interrupt when you're asking these questions. Whenever the speaker takes a pause or has completed a certain uh, you know, segment of what they're talking about, it's obviously polite to request, is it all right if I can ask you a question? Or you know, I have something that I would really want you to add to what Okay, so when you show your curiosity, you show your passion towards what they're saying, that's a great way to show engagement and people would really appreciate some intelligent questions. Then intermittently give some feedback. Feedback could be topics like, like yes, interesting, wow, that's fascinating. So when you use such words, these are not words that you're using to interrupt the speaker, but these are words that you're using to encourage so instead of interrupting and start conversation or uh, interrupting with a question while the person is speaking, when you use these words of, you know, which are um, positive words, it actually helps the speaker continue and share more about what they would like to. So these are some techniques that one can use when it comes to being a good listener. And I, like I said, that's a huge part of communication. So you've got some understanding of verbal as well as nonverbal communication. And last topic that I'm going to talk about, which is quite challenging, honestly, and you know, not many of us are equipped to handle this difficult conversations. It could be for uh, you know something that you disagree with at, at your university, at your workplace. It could be speaking with somebody in the family. It could be giving feedback to somebody in the organization. We all will have to deal with difficult conversations at different stages in our life. So let me share some quick tips that can help you handle difficult conversations with ease. First thing, always look at a win solution. Whenever you're having a difficult conversation, it's not me versus you. It's about both of us finding a win-win solution that's going to work for both parties. Whenever you're having a difficult conversation, rather than blaming the opposite person, try and reason out and go with some logic, go with some pointers that's going to help your point across. Number three, be extremely respectful. So even though it's a difficult conversation, like I said, it's an argument, it's a conflict, you're giving feedback to a subordinate, do not attack the person. Be highly, highly respectful of what you're talking to that person about because if they feel attacked, they are going to close themselves up and your communication is not going to reach. So that's why we strongly recommend something called the sandwich mechanism where you start with the positive note, give the feedback or the negative comments in between and close again with a positive comment. So let's assume you need to give someone feedback on a certain project that they were working with you. So I appreciate, you know, you tried to work on this project and you did a really good job. However, I feel that the PPT could have been designed much better. I'm certain that you'll definitely work better on the next project that we have. So when you use the sandwich mechanism, the impact of your conversation is far softer and at the same time, the person gets the message. And last tip when it comes to handling difficult conversations, never use you statements, instead use I statements. Say, you did not do a good job. You did not call me on time. You did not send the email. So the minute we use a lot of you statements, again, they become very attacking. Instead, use I statements. I would have appreciated it if you could send the email on time. I would have really liked it if the project was sent on time. So the minute you use I instead of you, the person doesn't feel attacked and we can be very objective about the conversation that we are having. So I hope you found all these simple tips effective. Like I said, don't just focus on what you're saying, but also how you are saying, which means your body language, your voice, tone, pronunciation, all of it. Communication is not just about speaking, but it's also about being a good listener. And last but not the least, Try and become a better version of yourself, not just in your technical skills, but also in your soft skills. Because as you progress in your career, 
technical skills are going to be more or less same. It's the softer aspect of your personality that's definitely going to help you achieve bigger goals. So thank you so much, everyone, for attending this. You know, just want to say stay safe and uh, take care of yourself. And we'd love to hear some questions that you may have and answer it to the best of our ability. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing these insights. It has been very enriching. We have truly understood the importance of communication skills, and I will personally definitely work on them. Mentor Mitra's intervention in grooming and soft skills. We provide one-to-one -one counseling sessions, focused webinars on relevant segments, as well as directed workshops on specific needs. Now we would like to proceed to the Q&A session by our audience. Nisha ma'am, the first question we have is for you. Right. How can we ensure that we will achieve our best authentic selves when establishing our personal brand while at the same time making sure that we still have that advantage towards others? Um, repeat that again, please, because um, I'm, I'm trying to see what the person is trying to get out of this. Sure, sure, ma'am. How can we ensure that we will achieve our best authentic selves while, when establishing our personal brand, while at the same time making sure that we still have an advantage towards others? Over others, do they mean, or advantages to others? Um, there, there's the little dichotomy. However, okay, let me take the first part of the question. Um, is that exactly what I had said is when you know yourself and you know what is the purpose um, and uh, what is your reason that through, what are, the, what are the core values that you resonate with? That's going to become the core of your brand speak. That is going to be who you really are. Uh, as, as far as having, so if I'm getting the question correctly, it's having an advantage over the others. So if, if I may um, use Miss Thumpy's line, which was very nice, is to continuously become the best version of yourself. Your competition is not another person. Your competition is a better version of you today than you were yesterday, because it will be the skills that you attain, the experience that you had, how that helped you grow. And so the competition then becomes with yourself. And uh, in today's world, um, I must tell you that while as a brand, I am going to try and shine better. If my focused energy is trying to put another down or trying to compete, I'm not going to be fully firing on 100% cylinder strength to build myself. It is um, a world of collaboration today. So to become the better version of myself, I need to keep on taking steps to uh, evolving better competing against myself is how I would put it. I'd love for Miss Thumpy to add to that also. Sure, ma'am. Rishma? So absolutely, I second what uh, Nisha just said. It's uh, you versus you rather than you versus others. So while you're being yourself, you're being authentic to who you are, but let's try and put our best selves forward and more interestingly, evolve with different stages in our own life and career. That's very imperative. Absolutely. Thank you, ma'am. I think you both have put it very beautifully. Um, the next question we have is for uh, Grishma, ma'am. Um, how to overcome my stage fright when I speak in front of many people? And a slight change to the same question because we've received um, similar questions is that um, I get very scared when I talk to people for the first time. I'm very shy. So how to overcome that shyness? Okay, great. So I'll answer the first part, which is the public speaking, and then I'll take the second question. So for a lot of us, so in a lot of studies, it's said that public speaking is the number one fear in the world. So if you 
fear speaking in front of public, let me assure you, you're not the only person. You know, even somebody like me or Miss Nisha, we this is our full-time career, yet we get those little butterflies when we get on stage and it's absolutely normal. For me, public speaking is a performing art. So if any of you, you know, you're into music or dancing, you know, when you go on stage to sing a song or to perform a dance, you would have put hours of practice in it. So public speaking is no different. It's a performing art. The more you practice the skill, the better you're going to be when you get that opportunity. So don't wait for that big opportunity to come. Try and grab small opportunities where you can start building pub, you know, your skills in public speaking. It could be comparing an event online. It could be you know, becoming an MC at an event in your own family. So try and grab small opportunities where you start honing the skill because public speaking is a skill which is absolute must if we want to grow in our career and it's definitely something that can be learned something that can be practiced and like I said the better you practice it becomes it's performing art so the better you're going to do it. Second question that came through was how to break the ice with uh, new people, right? So you can use the same strategies that I spoke about. Ask interesting questions. So sometimes when you don't know how to break the ice, certain strategies work. First, ask interesting questions. So who do you know at the party? Or, you know, what brings you to this particular event? So sometimes just asking questions allows the opposite person to open up. Second strategy is the power of compliments. So if you could just walk up to someone and say, I really like what you're wearing, or I really like, uh, you know, what you just spoke at the seminar. So when you start with a compliment, that also works beautifully to break the ice. And if you're meeting someone who you knew about, you can definitely do some research online and try and strike something that's common between you and the opposite person. Could be your school or college or a common friend that you may have. And definitely striking commonality is also a great way to break the ice. I hope that answers the question. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Nisha, ma'am, we have another question. How important is self-grooming in achieving success? Well, I think uh, both uh, Grishma and I have touched upon um, the aspect of how First impressions are, um, you know, 55% are nonverbal and they are visual. And we're all very visual creatures. Um, the minute we see somebody, we see a stranger, we take away stuff about them and invent a whole. So grooming plays an extremely important part of that first impression because it, it is about the effort that you're making with yourself. It is how you value yourself, your self-esteem, your self-worth, because that's what you're taking out and that effort that you're putting out to the world for the face that you're putting out to the world. So absolutely, there, that's a no compromise area in terms of, uh, you know, a casting a dynamic, impactful image that you want for a win-win situation. Absolutely. Does that answer your question? Yes, ma'am, definitely. Um, another question for Grishma, ma'am. How can we show our soft, our, uh, soft skills in this pandemic when everything, um, I'll actually phrase it a little better. How can we deliver this kind of grooming success, especially in this kind of pandemic we have now? And what are the things we must consider uh, that needs to be recognized now? Wonderful question, firstly. Yes, you know, today more than ever, it is your soft skills that are even more important because the world is so competitive now that because of the pandemic and because you're working from home, we can hire people from any part of the globe to work. So that means your technical skills are not going to be a game changer. I always talk about this. <clears throat> so more than um, before, being considerate to people. We have to understand that these are challenging times. People have maybe family members who are unwell. People have a lot of anxiety. So being a little 
aware of the mental issues that people might be chat, uh, you know, maybe facing. Second is the entire cultural sensitivity. So while you're working with people from across the globe, understanding different cultures, you know, being sensitive towards that, I think that can also go a long way when we talk about soft skills. Third, even if you're working from home, how can you display your professionalism? It could be as simple as logging onto your call on time and doing a technical check before the meeting starts, or how you dress, even though it may be just, you know, first half of your body, but yet how you put yourself together before an important meeting or an interview or a discussion. I think all these small things communicate a lot about you. So even though they may be very small things in today's world, but these are the things that people will definitely appreciate and remember you for. So, you know, taking care of uh, asking people about their well-being, asking them about their family, how do you handle difficult situations around you, all of that's going to be definitely part of your soft skills and it's going to help you make a mark for yourself. Thank you, ma'am. Nisha, ma'am, would you like to add anything to this? Um, I'd actually, I was just going to say that I'd love to add to this because uh, what, what Krishma brought up was so relevant with everything being on Zoom and Zoho and Google Meets. What's happening is that uh, people have a kind of thought it's all right to have this pajama culture and the fashion industry has kind of taken in and hashtag slob chic is in and so pajamas are being made for, you know, a loungewear. What we don't understand, and I'd like you to know this, that I come from an army background. And as a kid, I would see uh, my dad's uh, metal ribbons being put every day and, you know, the shoes polished. And in those days, uh, there were uh, the Sahayaks or the orderlies who were, who were like, you know, the, 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 say the foot soldier who'd help the senior officer. And, and once uh, asking one of the foot soldiers in Nepali, because my dad was from the Gorkha Rifles, like, why do you polish it so much? He said, you know, the general must see his face in the shoe. And I took that away because I understood that proper preparation prevents poor performance. And what's happening is that we forget that even though people may just be able to see our face, the clothes first affect our psyche and our brain and our alertness level. And that's how it's going to affect our performance. And you'll see people eating on Zoom calls. You'll see them not, you know, uh, in the most alert state. And for me, that's a very disturbing situation because I'm thinking, how are they really focused or are they thinking work from home is just another chill out scene and I'll get it done when I get it done. So I really think that, you know, just because there's been a paradigm shift in the way things are moving, I think we should not give up on um, the way we represent ourselves. It should be exactly how it would be if we were face to face. That's my personal opinion. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, we have another question. Nisha, ma'am, how can we tell if our communication was effective? Well, actually, um, Grishma, ma'am, uh, covered these topics so brilliantly that the answers were right there. So the communication cycle gets complete not when the words leave the communicator's mouth or uh, their body language demonstrates what they're trying to communicate, but the cycle gets complete when it has been possibly properly understood, listened to, and then the feedback goes back and then the cycle is complete. So the only way that you will know that the communication has hit home is A, when you will see a person giving a positive stroke, whether it is physically in terms of how uh, Krishma showed, um, you know, through those images, whether they are leaning in, whether they've shown interest, whether there's head tilt, what they're saying, what they've heard, and whether the feedback is closing that entire communication process. That's when that whole thing is going to be complete. Very true, ma'am, very true. Um, thank you so much once again for providing us with your valuable information and knowledge on the subject. Both the, talk, both the talks that have been provided have been a great learning exposure to us 
and has been an asset for the audience as well as our team thank you so much once again thank you the pleasure has been mine entirely thank you very much for aligning this thank you so much mentor mitra all the very best to all of you take care of yourselves thank you thank you the pleasure was ours steps to avail the e certificate attend the complete webinar when you see thank you on the screen there will appear a link to a google attendance form in the chat box click to mark your attendance and get the feedback questionnaire emailed fill the questionnaire you get on mail for your details follow our page and if you did get replied in affirmative and actually did not follow our page you will not get the certificate if all the above stated steps are followed you will automatically get an e certificate in 24 to 48 hours you could reach out to us via our website and or email us at contact@mentormister.com you could also follow us on facebook and instagram thank you so much While progressing in life, at times we feel stuck due to the lack of knowledge of how to manage our time well. Deciding how to prioritize the different facets of daily self-management gets hectic, whether it's for school students, university students, or working people. The lack of motivation, a great amount of workload, and the expectations at the academic front, in college, or at one's workplace is draining for an individual. Under such circumstances, a helping hand can instruct and support us in setting the right direction for our goals. At Mentor Mitra, we engage with individuals wherever they are in their journey of career development and help them learn life skills to manage complex situations while enhancing their potential and performance to optimum. Our involvement helps individuals to set the right goals and create options. by following an objective process thereby enabling them to define and manage their priorities we help them generate self awareness and teach them how to prioritize their time effectively we also enhance their emotional quotient with techniques like mind mapping and dealing with success and failure to reinforce their goals and processes while also grooming them with soft skills that are necessary for the competitive selection process does making them confident and prepared for success that there are many challenges that one faces during exams and that kind of affects the stress levels and the performance of the individual there due to the stress which is there so how do people manage that so the first thing that people should remember is that each and every person has a different coping mechanism right so a person can use an avoidant mechanism technique or it can he or, he or she can use problem focused technique so in avoidant technique we what do we actually do when a stress comes okay so what we do is we avoid we try to avoid it we try to uh, distract ourselves from that stress so that we can completely focus on whatever is coming whatever is approaching and now that the exams have been cancelled people are getting more and more anxious and stressed related to what will happen when will the exams be coming and what should we do now because we are so confused that 
are the exams going to even happen should we actually prepare for that so this stress is very uh, you know th- apprehensive and uh, you know there are two types of stress one is you stress that is the healthy type of stress we all experience when we are going to give an exam right but we have to you know focus on how we are coping with that stress because if we are just you know overthinking and you know pondering about what are what is going to happen then that is that stress is going to become a distress for us and that is going to impact our daily functioning so of course stress impacts a lot okay moving on to the second question there are certain symptoms which go unidentified in students that even if they feel something they're more like you know maybe if i'll see a movie i'll be better to go with or maybe if i'll just settle but then those are the symptoms you usually don't recognize 